The world has begun welcoming in 2011. Australians were among the first to celebrate with 1.5 million people gathering at Sydney Harbour. Not to be outdone, Hong Kong hosted a breathtaking display. Did Taipei. And as New York gears up for its annual party in Times Square. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! They've been testing the iconic New Year's Eve ball. Soon, all over the world. 2010 will be history. Il est légal au 
l'occupation Illégale occupation Bağlatan girsin, bağlatan sahaya. Allah emanet. Ömer Tülü iç dışı yapıyor. Sol makasla arka tarafa yüklenmek istiyor Asif Karabay'ı. Pervane gibi dönerek güreş bütün hızıyla devam ediyor. Öz sanın ağzı bağlanıyor. Açın. Arkadaki neyi bakın? Arkadaki neyi bakın? Açın kapıları. Sol makas güreşini baş başa fırtına gibi dönerek kendi başı açıkta kalıyor, güreş bütün hızıyla devam ediyor, çatala dönüyor, uh be cemallara, ustadır arkadaş, binayı temelden yapan ışık arenasında Kemal Bey'le akrep olmuştur çatal kapan. Four police officers and a doctor have been killed in Mexico in what appears to be another coordinated attack by gunmen linked to drug cartels. Such killings in the northern city of Monterrey are becoming almost a daily occurrence and arguably less shocking. What is shocking is that as 2010 draws to a close, nearly 15,000 people are estimated to have been murdered in drugs-related violence in Mexico this year alone a record which dwarfs even the number killed in Afghanistan, a country officially at war. Such statistics have inevitably led to increasing questions about the Mexican government's policy towards the country's cartels. In 2006, President Felipe Calderon declared war on Mexico's drug barons. But year on year, the violence has increased. Many will hope 2011 will be different. But for the moment, that's all it is. Hope. The United States has withdrawn the visa of Venezuela's ambassador to Washington in retaliation for the rejection by Caracas of President Obama's choice of U.S. ambassador. The State Department said Venezuela had brought the measure upon itself. The move by Washington effectively expels Bernardo Alvarez Herrera. He's thought to be still in the U.S., but the move means he can't return there. Earlier this week, Larry Palmer was blocked from becoming U.S. ambassador to Caracas. Comments he made earlier this year angered President Hugo Chavez. The American diplomat accused the Venezuelan government of close ties to Colombian rebels and suggested that morale was low in Venezuela's armed forces. The spat follows long simmering tensions between Caracas and Washington, but is thought unlikely to affect trade. One of the world's biggest rock stars is celebrating possibly his proudest work. Elton John, who married his partner David Furnish five years ago, became a father on Christmas Day to Zachary Jackson Levon. His son is partly named after one of his 1971 hits. Levon was a tribute to drummer and singer Levon Helm. Both parents say the identity of their son's surrogate mother will remain secret. The birth comes after attempts to adopt an orphan in Ukraine last year were thwarted by government regulations. Elton John and David Furnish have been together since the early 90s. The 63-year-old performer might now find he's swapping late-night concerts for bottle feeds and nappy changes. Angry voices are being raised in Moscow's airports, where many passengers' Christmas holiday plans are in tatters due to the big freeze. Thousands of people are unsure of whether they'll take off at all. Many have slept at least one night on terminal floors with planes grounded due to thick ice. One woman at Sheremetyevo Airport said, Our fear is that we'll get our boarding passes, get through passport control, never to be seen again. 
will be stuck after border control until tomorrow or maybe even New Year's Eve. Another frustrated flyer bound for New York said we're talking about filing a collective lawsuit to get compensation for moral and financial damages. Airports say they've run out of antifreeze, while many passengers complain of a lack of information. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin's ordered government airport workers off their holidays until they get the problem sorted.